In today's feature overview, we're going to be looking at a simple interaction system. We're going to have an interaction component on our player, which allows it to interact with different things in the scene. Over here, we've got a treasure chest that you can't walk through, but you can open. We've got coffee and tea that you can walk through and that you can interact with. If I drink the tea, I get a note and it vanishes. The coffee can be consumed three times before it disappears. Looking through this, we've got three different components. We've got an interaction component that we will attach to our player or NPCs. It's got a signal on it that will be raised to tell you that there's something new you can interact with. So that can be used to either update the AI or update your UI if you're a player. We then have an interactable thing, which is basically just a couple of methods being added to any item that's already in your scene. Those methods tell our interaction system whether we can interact and what happens when we do. And finally, there's a UI component which we use for the player to display a little icon and some text telling them what's going to happen when they interact. Before we dive into the code, we should have a look at collision layers and masks. Our interaction component here is set up so that it's not on any collision layers. That means other things won't collide with our interaction component, so it can't get in the way or push things around. We've also got a collision mask, which I've set up to be on my interactable layer. So our interaction component will only collide with things on the interactable layer. If you've never configured these layers before, they are set in the project settings. If you scroll down the bottom here under layer names for 2D physics, you can set up different layers for different events. The default layer is where all of my environment and player stuff lives. So that's basically things that will collide with one another. The chest is set up on the default layer so that the player who's also on the default layer can't walk through it. I'm creating this interactable layer so that anything that wants to be interactable just needs to be added to the interactable layer and implement the two important interaction methods, which are our can interact and interact. So if we look at, say, the coffee, the coffee is set up on our interactable layer, but it's not in our default layer, which is why we can walk through it. On the other hand, if we look at our chest, this is configured on the default layer, which blocks the player walking through it, and our interactable layer, which allows our interaction component to interact with it. Starting with the interaction component, this is just an area 2D with a collision shape. Looking at the script, we've got an interaction parent, which is an export variable that tells us who this interaction component's attached to. I'm using an export variable instead of just doing a get parent so that you can attach it anywhere in the node tree. If we look at my player for an example, I have a player node, which has all of my player logic in its script. I then have a sprite, and under that is my interaction component where I've pointed this back to the player. This means that when I want to change direction, I can just flip my sprite. And because this is a child of the sprite, my collision box will move to the other side of the character as well. The next part of the code is we expose a signal. This on interactable changed will fire whenever we move into range of something we can interact with, or when we move away from it, we'll fire it and pass through null as our new interactable. The only other variable that we need to keep track of is our interaction target, which will get set when we move in range of something we can interact with, and it gets nulled out when we move out of range. The bulk of the functionality here is in our process method, so every frame we check whether we have an interaction target. And if we have an interaction target and the player has just pressed the interact button, which I have set up in my input mapping here as the E key, if the interaction target and my interact button has been pressed and our interaction target has an interaction interact method, we'll call it and pass ourselves through as an argument. This interaction interact method is what's going to do the bulk of the behavior. If we have a quick look at a chest, when it's interacted with, we will play the open animation, we'll mark it as open and we'll disable collisions. For the T example, we print out a message and then we delete the T. And for our coffee, we print a message, decrement our uses, and if we've run out of uses, we'll delete it. The other two pieces to our interaction component are when we collide with a interactable item and when we stop colliding with an interactable. 
If we've just collided with something, we check whether it has the interaction can interact method. And if it does, we'll pass through our interaction parent. So in my example, we'll be passing through the player node here. This allows our interactable item to define the logic on whether it can be used at the moment or not. So say you've got a door that needs a key. Because we're passing through the player, you could check the player's inventory and see whether the key exists. And in that case, you return true. If the player doesn't have the key, you return false. If the player can't interact with the item, we stop there. And we, our interaction system doesn't tell anyone about it because it can't be interacted with. But if it can be interacted with, we save our interaction target and then we emit our signal to let everyone who's listening know that we now have something we can interact with. The second part here is the interaction body exited. We just check whether the thing we've walked away from is our current interaction target. And if it is, we'll null our interaction target out and tell everyone that we can no longer interact with anything. If we have a look at how this is set up in our scene, we simply have the signals configured here for our body entered and body exited, which are pointing at those two methods in our script. If we look at an example of an interactable thing like this chest, we have a static body 2D, we've got an animated sprite which plays an opening animation, we've got some particles that we spit out when the chest opens, we have an animation player which plays the animation and emits the particles, and then we have a collision shape. Now it's important to note that our collision is set up on a special interactables layer. If we look here, we have our default collision layer, which stops the player walking through it, and our interactable collision layer, which allows our interaction component to notice this. If we take a look at the chest script, we have a variable telling us whether or not we're already open. When the script kicks off, it makes sure that our animation is at the start frame, and our animation player is stopped. We've then got our interaction methods. So we have interaction can interact, which gets called when our interaction component collides with this. This is basically our validation method. So here we could check whether the player has a key in their inventory. We could check whether a particular switch has been pressed, or maybe you have doors that only NPCs can walk through. We then have a couple of helper methods for the UI one that allows us to set the text that we should display and one that allows us to set a interaction texture. The bulk of this is our interaction interact method, which is called by the interaction component when the input happens. So for our player, that's when you press the E button. For an NPC, that's when its AI tells it to interact with something. In our chest here, we play an animation, we update our is open flag, here I'm removing the interaction layer from our chest. Once you've opened a chest, you can't interact with it anymore. We could similarly have logic up in here to say if not is open and our interaction component is a player. But instead of setting it up this way, I've decided to remove the collision altogether. We're doing an XOR between the current collision layer and layer 8. If we have a look at our layers, hovering over the interactable layer tells us the value is 8, so we know that's what we want to compare against. The XOR is exclusive OR, so it'll give you every true value in your collision layer except for the value 8. So when I run it against my collision layer up here, 1 is the only true value that's not 8. So this is our value 1. Value 8 will be ignored. By removing the interactable collision layer, we will trigger all of the body leave events and we can't be interacted with in future. The final component that we need to look at is our interaction component UI, which is where these two methods come in. These allow an interactable thing to override the texture displayed and the text. If we have a look at the scene, this is a control node that has a texture rect with some sort of interaction icon and some text to tell the user what they're gonna do. Our script for this exports a ton of variables. If we have a look, we have a interaction component node path, which is used to attach our UI to the interaction component that it should be listening to. We then also have a texture node path and text node path, which are exporting this texture rectangle and the rich text label 
The reason we're doing export variables here is so that Godot will track stuff and if we decide to rearrange or add new nodes, we won't have to update scripts. If you have a look at the little card thing up here, I've got a video explaining how and why we do that. We've also got a default texture and default text which I've used to set our default texture to the little dot icon. So if people don't override it, they'll get a little dot. And if they don't override the text, they'll get interact. Because the UI component is going to be a child of the player, we need a fixed position above the interactable thing where our UI prompt is going to display. We're going to constantly update our global position to that fixed position so that when the player moves around, despite us being a child of the player, we're not gonna move with him. In our ready method here, so when the game starts up, we'll grab our interaction component that we're interested in, and we will connect to its on interactable changed event. And when that fires off, we will call our interactable target changed method. We'll also just hide ourselves so that the UI doesn't display by default. Next, in our process method, which happens every frame, we'll just set our position to our fixed position. At the beginning of the game, that's going to be zero, but we're hidden, so it doesn't matter. And we'll update our fixed position when we have an interactable component. The bulk of the UI logic lives in our interactable target changed. So this is when the interaction component has collided with something it can interact with like our player has run up to a door. In this case, if they've left, so the player has walked away from a door, we'll just hide our UI. Otherwise, we must have run up to something because our new interactable is not null. We'll grab our default texture and text, and then we'll check against the thing that we've just run into. If it has an interaction get texture method, we'll call that to get its custom texture, and we'll do the same thing for text. If we have a quick look at our coffee script here, you'll see that it's a consumable item. If we have a look at that, consumable items override the interaction get texture to use the hand icon, and they override the text to say that it's something that can be drunk. So at the end of this little block, we will either have our interaction texture set to the default texture or something custom to that interactable item. We'll then update our texture and text, which are our texture rect and our label, to have those values. And then we'll find the fixed position that we want to be tied to. This is going to be the global position of what we're interacting with in the x, so horizontally. And then we take the global position in the y and subtract 50 to move ourselves slightly above it. We then set our global position to start us off, and then we show the UI. And then every frame that global position is going to continually be updated to match the fixed position that we're after. Hopefully this has taught you all you need for a decoupled interaction system in your own games, but if you've got any questions leave them in the comment box down below.